All right, so it's time for an example. Examples are way more fun than listen to me just jabber on. Uh, so we're gonna uh, download a GitHub repo to start things off. Uh, so if you follow this link, it'll take you to a, a simple Ajax uh, GitHub repo. Uh, simply download the zip file, just like always, and put it into your web dev links folder uh, in your static folder, just like you've always done. All right, I'll let you do that. Uh, so once you've got it downloaded, remove the hyphen master, you should be able to, uh, to come into Eclipse, uh, refresh your static folder, uh, and you should have simple Ajax show up. So what we're going to be doing in here is an example called server time. Uh, so for server time, I've, I've got a solution as well, uh, but we're actually just going to work it through from, from the starting code, and we're going to explain what it does, right? So I will say that for this one, if you right click on it and you say open with system editor, um, that will eventually end up bad, right? Because we're going to be doing client server communication. And if we open it this way, we won't have a server, right? So we're actually going to have to run localhost this time. I suppose I should do that. I should just copy in these, these strings first. Uh, you can find them in the, in the link above. Uh, and just go and stick them into uh, main.py uh, and just stick them into your jQuery track. So the one we care about now is, of course, server time. So I just thought I'd go ahead and get those up, uh, and then I would start my, uh, my back end running. Once you've got your back end running, uh, you should just be able to click on the link here for Simple Ajax Request Server Time, uh, and it'll take you to the page that we're going to be building up. So you come to this page, and it just says Current Server Time. So this is what we're going to be populating with the server time. Uh, and you, know, you can click this button, but not much happens. Uh, and then you can also like um, set a message here uh, and do a post with Ajax. If you want to, you can inspect element on these guys, and you can see that there are some log messages being displayed. So here it looks like I can click the button, get server time five times, and then if I click this button, it'll say, you would like to make a post to the server. Um, and so that's really all that's going on here now. And so we're going to start filling in the JavaScript, uh, and then we're going to fill in the, the back end to actually receive these. So this time, what we're going to focus on is just the JavaScript. So go ahead and open up uh, servertime.js. Uh, and we're going to start looking at what we've got uh, and start adding in our skeleton calls for a GET request. And so if you look at this uh, the JSON, you can see that there's an enable buttons function already done for you. I didn't make you type everything from scratch. Um, and when you call GET server time, this is where it sends you that message. Uh, you called GET server time. And so right here is where we're going to start adding some code, right? And so the code that we want to add is we want to add a GET JSON request. And what we have to pass him is we have to pass him what URL he'd like to go to. Um, we don't have a URL yet. We're going to have to make it. Um, I've decided to call server time. You could call it anything you wanted, uh, but that's why I've decided to call it. Also, if you did want to pass data in, uh, you know, you could pass in uh, keys and values, uh, kind of like this. So if you wanted to pass in parameters, uh, you could do that. For what we're doing, though, we don't need any parameters, uh, but we do need a done function. So we're just going to wait until it's done, and then we're going to call that. And then we're also going to tack on a fail, uh, which is a function as well. Um, <clears throat> instead of typing out all of the details here, you can copy it from above. Oh, make sure you add a T in the word function. Um, just because, especially the fail function, I, I don't want you to have to type out the whole thing. All right, so I just kind of put mine in here. So the done function, um, when it gets called back, it actually passes you something. It passes you a JSON object. Um, at this point, the JSON object is actually just like a JavaScript object. And then if there's an error, um, there's actually a bunch of things passed in, right? There's what was the original request, so it stands for jQuery XML HTML TTP request. Um, and there's a text status and an error, which to be honest, I don't really care that much about. Um, but it is nice to uh, display something. So if you're trying to figure out why it's not working, you know, you can see it's because the, the request failed, right? So that's kind of the bare minimum of what you need to do um, to actually respond to this. So uh, this is the basic skeleton. So basically, anytime you're wanting to do a GET request, you could copy in the skeleton. Uh, and then uh, really, the details are, what do you do with the data once it's here? If you wanted to, uh, you could just print it out, right? So you could just say, uh, received, uh, and then you could just print out uh, the JSON message. Um, one good way to, to display an object is with the uh, json.stringify. Uh, with json.stringify, what it'll do is it'll um, 
convert uh, an object uh, into a string for you uh, and make it nice and pretty, right? Um, we could have done we could have done this printing in a variety of ways, but uh, I kind of like JSON.stringify and JSON.parse. They're good things to know, so we're doing that. And then what we really want to do is we want to pick out from that object something to display on the screen. So what we want to do is we want to actually write uh, something to the screen, right? So you can open up the HTML and you can see, you know, what is the thing called that we want to do? Um, it looks like it's called response message output. Uh, it seems like a lovely name. Somebody picked a genius name there for us. So that's the ID. And then what we want to do is we want to set its text to something. Um, JSON typically is a dictionary, so you should you should respond with a dictionary, um, and then you can pull things out of there as necessary. Um, we're going to write it, um, but I decided to call it message, right? So we haven't written this yet. There's nothing sacred about the word message. It, it could have been called anything you wanted, but we're going to call it method message uh, once we get to that part. And so to be honest, at this point, uh, your client uh, is good to go, right? So, I mean, you could run it now, uh, but, but you know that you're going to crash and burn. Uh, so if you hit refresh uh, and you click on get server time, uh, it should throw an error. Oh, it looks like I actually got some other error. Uh, looks like I uh, copy-paste error. Uh, put a semicolon on the wrong side, so try that again. Uh, and so now I got the error I was expecting. So I got a big red error from Chrome uh, saying that it didn't find it. Uh, and then I got my little log message as well. So it just says, uh, failed, error not found. So I guess uh, you don't actually have to make a log because there's going to be a big message from Chrome right above it. Um, but it is good to think about what would you want to do for your user uh, if this did actually fail. Uh, and so that's actually it for, for this part. Uh, come back next time and we'll write the server side to receive this get request and respond to it. All right, see you then.